Oh yeah, and one other thing. Speaking of world premieres, there is actually some news that might make you guys very happy. AC Family, making their world debut on this channel. Behold, I am pleased to introduce to you our brand new subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon welcome to the ac family enjoy ant kingdom to be ac family i present to you the green mossy floating island haven i've called a vista this island of soil rocks and greenery was named after the legendary floating city above the clouds inhabited by a race of birdmen from the animated tv series thundercats and boy do I have some incredible plans for Avista's population of life on and in its rich, pristine soils. I love the carpet of green moss, which is quite spongy and soft to touch. At the very apex of this floating island stands a grand sumo bonsai banyan tree of a surprising 11 years in age, like a wise archaic matriarch towering majestic and strong over the entire land. For this very reason, I call it the Great Tree of Wisdom. Wire braces help give the Great Tree of Wisdom some structure. Below ground, its roots are strong, running deep, and hold all of the vista together from beneath. A border of shiny white stones mark the entire island's periphery. In fact, I just love the rockwork of these territories. There were three large boulders on the island. This one here, towards the top of the hill, another here, adjacent to it, and a third on the opposite side of the island. I also noticed baby plants sprouting with optimism in certain favorable places. Altogether, a vista was a magnificent piece of nature on its own. Now, AC family, are you ready to hear my plans for this floating island? All right. So the reason I call a vista a floating island is because I intend for this entire bonsai centerpiece to be my very first true open concept ant farm. Yes, for the first time on this channel, this ant farm will be completely glassless. So nothing will separate us from the ants that live on this island. No walls, just open air between us and a vista's inhabitants. I don't even intend to add water around or beneath it. Just air all around. The idea sounds crazy, right? Well, AC family, you know us by now. We are the creator of worlds, bold and impossible, right? But you may be asking, if we add ants onto this floating island, what will keep them on the island and not crawl out onto this dresser and loose in the ant room? Well, I'm about to solve that issue right now. The island of Avista sits inside a glass tray. When we're done, Avista will be suspended above it. But here now, I mix a special concoction of baby powder and rubbing alcohol in a one-to-one -one ratio. This barrier will help keep all ants straying away from the lush island within the glass tray, which I plan to keep bare and dry, so ants won't want to nest or hang out in this lower area much. And now it's time to paint the borders of a vista with this barrier. Here we go. When this barrier dries, all creatures will slip off it like an impenetrable dry cloud. One final preparation I need to do is to create a starting point for digging holes for the ant colony that will be moved in. I don't have to do this as ants are more than capable of digging tunnels on their own but it would help give the ants a valuable head start and speed up the process of moving into a vista soils, pressing in a hole here and here between these two rocks. Let's hope the ants choose one of these two holes as their starting point for their subterranean nest. There, all right. Now that all preparations have been set, it's now time to meet our new Avistans. AC family, behold, 
Here is a test tube within which has been living a very special colony that was raised from just single captured parents during their nuptial flight. Are you excited to meet them? <laughs> so am I. AC family, let's do this. Placing the test tube onto the floating island of Avista. All right, and now it's time to remove the cover, keeping the colony in the dark, to expose them to the bright lights. And now to remove the cotton. One, two, three. There we go, AC family. I'm super excited to present to you the ever adorable and diminutive ants known as Fedoli ants, aka big headed ants. Aren't they just the cutest ants ever? They're super small, and this is the closest this 4K camera can capture them. What you guys are seeing here is actually the ants' first experience of the outside world, outside this test tube in which the colony was founded. They've never known a world other than this founding test tube. Now, the reason they're called big headed ants is because these tiny ants are polymorphic, meaning their workers come in various sizes, including majors and super majors with big heads. You can see some majors inside, but they'll be coming out for us for a better look shortly. Look at them exploring the mossy carpeted territories. They are just absolutely adorable. And oh, it looks like a few of the ants have an exciting message to relay to the colony. They rush into the test tube and seem to be doing their best to get other members of the colony excited too. Yes, AC family, just as I had hoped, I believe the Fedoli ants have discovered one of our starting holes. Yay! The move is officially about to begin. Other ants have gone on to explore other areas of the island. Now, as the ants are emigrating into Avista soils, let's go over why I chose to take in these ants. Remember a few weeks back when we explored the rainforests of St. Lucia in the Caribbean? Well, we spotted a colony of local Fedoli ants, and I asked you in a poll if this was a type of ant you would like for us to try to keep. 88% of you voted yes. So your wish, AC family, was my command. A friend offered me this test tube within which he raised a very promising colony of Fedoli ants. Though the species we saw in St. Lucia is a different species from these ants here, like all Fedoli, these ants are also impressively polymorphic. Speaking of which, look, AC family, wandering out to the mouth of the test tube is a major. Look at its giant head. Oh, spoke too soon. She went back in. It seems the majors all hang out together, like a big-headed ant posse, huddled in the same chamber, and like a girl gang within the girl gang. If the ants can get one of them to wander out, I bet the rest of them will wander out too. Looking into the test tube, I noticed the colony's graveyard site, and also noticed brood, a larva, and batch of eggs. How sweet! As soon as the ants start moving out the brood, we will know for sure the ants have officially initiated the move. Oh look, it seems our Major has come for a second look out into the promising expanse beyond. Will she be brave enough to take the first step? And oh, the ants have started bringing out the brood. It's gotta be time to follow the crowd. And no, it seems the Major is not convinced. I think the reason the Majors and even the Queen are among the last to leave is in case their new location proves to be a bad place. I mean, they just discovered it a few minutes ago. The VIPs can be safe. Having these large ants move en masse uses up energy and makes the ants much more conspicuous to predators. The majors and queens are greater colony investments. But lo and behold, a few minutes later, a major comes back to inspect this trending message of a new and better home just beyond the test tube. She steps out cautiously onto the moss. And yes, off she goes to check out the new home. I love watching ants move in. And what's funny is, look, 
Some ants are bringing some of the brood back into the test tube. I find this happens sometimes because some ants feel the old home is better, but when more and more ants start pheromone marking the soils beyond, as the greater priority of colony transplant, all ants will be transporting the brood in the same direction. I actually find it super amazing that ants initiate such a big moving operation with only a biochemical language. Of course, as you may already know, ants communicate exclusively through pheromones, which communicate specific messages to ants in the area. Right now, it seems the ants have laid down a let's move out pheromone, as well as a this way to the new home pheromone, a here's where we're moving into pheromone, and bring in the babies this way, ladies pheromone. And hey, looks like the majors let's move out pheromone has been laid. Sorry, in my head, I imagine the Majors and Super Majors have an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. But I knew it. Once one of the Majors started moving out, the rest would soon follow suit. One even goes back to tell other Majors to pick up their stuff and go. AC Family, isn't it just satisfying to watch ants move? It's truly one of my favorite things to just sit and watch. Especially this colony. Have a look at these Majors. They all don't have the same size of big head. Some are smaller, and look at that one. Hers is huge and darker. These largest majors are the super majors and appear more and more in the colony the larger the colony gets. Those massive major heads are full of muscle and these huge ants specialize in cutting open or up hard food items like exoskeletons of insects and seeds. They also specialize in defense, basically, they're super important to the colony, and I find they have a sort of semi-VIP status, I guess. But AC family, look, here comes the true VIP. The queen has emerged. All right, and she's off, doing her best to crawl discreetly through the shadows within the moss and plunges down into the safe darkness of the hole. Success, the first queen is in. First queen, you ask? Yes. And here comes the colony's second queen. This Fadoli ant colony is a polygynous one. She follows the path and heads straight into the hole following her co-queen. AC family, I bet you're asking now, could there possibly be a third queen? Yep, and here she is in all her glory. She heads out as the ants guide her down the path with the help of pheromones into the new nest hole. Okay guys, perhaps some of you might be questioning the unthinkable, that perhaps this colony has a fourth queen ant? Could it be? Well, yes, and here she is. But you may notice that this queen is a bit special First off, if you look carefully, you will notice that she wears a brooch on her head, a phoretic mite clinging on, and her abdomen is indented. She's injured and pest-ridden, but despite this, she appears healthy and dives down into the nest hole. I'm actually not worried about her because my friend mentioned that this colony has survived for three months, starting from just these four queen ants captured during their mating flight and placed into a test tube to found a super colony together. Had the mites been the blood-sucking, dangerous kind, the ants would have all been wiped out by now. The mite on that queen's head is truly a brooch. A harmless mite that will likely fall off now that the colony is moved into more hospitable conditions. But I do love how this new camera can now catch these tiny details. And it makes me now wonder if phoretic mites are just as common a parasite as fleas or ticks on our larger animals. Anyway, now that I knew the colony was emigrating entirely into the soils of Avista, I decided to leave them alone for a few hours to move in peace. Coming back a few hours later, I checked the test tube. There were a few ants hanging out, but the test tube was evacuated and replaced with scavenging springtails. Well, that's good to know that Avista already had its team of spring cleaners. Now to check the hole they moved into. 
And wow, they've covered it up with soil. Interesting move. I suppose it was a smart move. A precautionary move. For sure their hole wasn't deep enough, so concealing the entire colony in ensured the safety of the colony, who were all concentrated in a single confined area. Alright, now that we knew the colony was completely moved in, I could safely remove the test tube. And hey, well looky here. AC family, that's an earthworm up on the surface. Wow. Hey, I wonder if the ants would try to eat it. Let's see. And no. That's cool. The ants see them as friends. Actually, this worm wasn't all. Look here, I also saw a tiny isopod right there next to the worm. It was awesome to know that Avista already had its soil conditioning organisms. But still, that's not all. Over the next few hours, I actually managed to spot several other creatures occupying the various microenvironments of Avista, including a tiny spider moving high above in the leaves of the Great Tree of Wisdom. How interesting. I assume this spider came with the tree, but I don't know if it'll end up staying on Avista. Especially with all these big-headed ants around. We'll see. I also spotted a miniature millipede and even a tiny caterpillar, but wasn't fast enough to catch them on camera. I do look forward to spotting more Avistan co-inhabitants that we don't yet know about. But for now, AC family, it's time to initiate our AC family tradition and offer our new ants a housewarming gift. Here is my superworm bin. And like picking a fattened goat for the celebratory feast, I plucked a superworm from the superworm colony. Now AC family, after cutting it up and placing it on the island, the Fedoli ants had come swarming their new feast. Majors and workers were out to feed on the delicious superworm meat. But then I noticed something funny. AC family, check this out. Here was the hole they'd moved into. But strangely, look, no trail from this hole to the superworm. What? How odd. Where were the ants coming from? I looked around to find the hole from which the colony was surfacing. And voila, here, right next to the superworm. AC family, the ants were emerging from that very first hole we made. The ants had incredibly dug an entire tunnel from the blocked up entrance hole to this hole. Wow, these ants are so fast at tunneling. I looked forward to see where else on the island they decided to create a nest exit. And from the looks of things, these ants don't create conspicuous ant hills. All right, AC family, I think you know what's next. It is time to give this cute Fedoli colony an official name. Leave your name suggestions for this colony in the comments, and I will choose my top favorites for us to vote on in a future video. All right. And there was one last thing I needed to do to make this entire new ant kingdom, the floating island of Avista, complete. I said I was going to make it a floating island. Now that the colony was all moved into the soils, I took two jars filled to the brim with soil. Then I lifted a vista up and place these two soil fill jars directly under the two drainage holes at the bottom of the bonsai pot. These two hollow pillars of soil could now provide the ants with extra space to expand their nest because with four queens and a healthy appetite, I have a hunch this ant colony will grow pretty fast and they'll surely appreciate the extension of digging medium. And so AC family, just like that, the floating island ant kingdom of Vista was complete. To me, this open concept living and bioactive ant farm was so cute, super satisfying to the eyes, and despite being a sort of nano ant farm, still offered us a lot to look at and discover and fit in perfectly within the antiverse. What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? I watched the inhabitants of Avista on the first day well into the night. I couldn't believe we were now owners of yet another ant colony the cutest ants of the ant room. I look forward to giving you continual updates on these cute Fedoli ants. Who knows, if they end up outgrowing a vista here, 
perhaps I may need to create a connection bridge to another floating island. Wouldn't that be something? But for now, let's leave the ants to spend their very first night out of their test tube within the cradling soils of a vista. Let's wish this colony well and hope for their continued success. Lights off. Now over the past few weeks, we've welcomed two new ant colonies to the channel. Here in the Antiverse, when a new ant colony arrives, we welcome them with open arms to join our collection of ant kingdoms. But what about if old ant colonies, whom we've had to say goodbye to in the past, returned from the dead? AC family, you won't believe this, but earlier this week, one of our past and declared deceased ant colonies, one I, as well as many of you, loved to death, has come back to life from the land of the dead. And so AC family, you guys will not believe who's come back to us to rejoin our Antiverse of Ant Kingdoms. AC family, I am overjoyed at what's coming up next. One of our several colonies from the past, whom we have lost, will be making an epic return to the Antiverse. So, hit that subscribe button and bell icon now, so you don't miss out on who's coming back. And hit the like button every single time, including now. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I've created a special playlist for you here. If you would like to watch the complete storyline playlist of all the ants in the Antiverse, you can follow their journeys from the very start so you can better appreciate how far the ants, as well as all of us, have come. Forget Game of Thrones. You'll be shocked at how epic the real lives of ants are. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch extended play scenes of the ants moving into their new home. It is super therapeutic and satisfying watching the ants moving in, so do check it out. And now it's time for the AC Question of the Week. Last week we asked, what determines gender in ants? Congratulations to S. McCool, who correctly answered, the gender of ants is determined by the number of chromosomes. Congratulations, S. McCool. You just won a free Hybrid Nest 2.0 Tetramorium version, which newly released at our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what made the fourth queen unique from the other queens? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. <laughs>